Hashtag her story, Saxony and its female academics. Saxony's universities and colleges are among the oldest in Germany. Yet without female involvement, their ongoing history would be inconceivable, and not just today and tomorrow, but also yesterday. For nearly 150 years, women in search of education have sought access to the four universities and numerous colleges in Saxony, including in times when they were barred from higher education. However, the official introduction of equal rights for women didn't bring about genuine equality in the university life for many long years. Women still had to struggle for a place in higher education, research and teaching in the face of serious reservations, prejudice and resistance. The exhibition Hashtag Her Story pays tribute to outstanding female academics and researchers from the higher education sector in Saxony past and present, making them ambassadors of women's demand for education in this region and beyond. The lives and careers of the women portrayed here are academic success stories rooted in Saxony. Hashtag Her Story tells of females' thirst for knowledge, determination and courage. Learn about the mathematician who risked her life exploring the desert of Peru, the doctor who was the first woman in Germany to be allowed to sit the state examination in medicine, the virtuoso ballerina who reinvented the zeitgeist with her style of dance, and the woman with a doctorate in engineering who made it to the boardroom of Volkswagen. Many of the stories recounted here concern women who were quite simply among the very first female undergraduates, postgraduates, lecturers, professors and even rectors at universities and colleges. Their biographies are as colourful and flamboyant as Saxony's higher education sector. And they indicate that women don't tend to study particular subjects. These pioneers, inventors and creators have contributed to Saxony's educational progress across the board, whether in mathematics, chemistry and physics, economics and politics, or dance, painting and music. Their stories are a source of inspiration and courage for the future. Female Lecturers In the early 20th century, women were finally permitted to take university degrees and doctorates. Even so, it wasn't until 1920 that they were granted the right by the Weimar Constitution to also take the habilitation, giving them access to a professorship. Even then, only few did so as the prospects for women in academia appeared too uncertain. By 1933, there were only 53 postdoctoral students throughout Germany, including two at Leipzig University. With the appointment committees made up solely of men, only 24 women with the habilitation managed to make the leap to a professorship. However, the situation began to change in 1939. Previously ousted out of academia by the Nazis, women now became increasingly involved in higher education teaching because of the shortage of male lecturers many of whom had been conscripted. The dearth of male lecturers at many Saxon universities and colleges continued after the war, giving some women a chance to gain a foothold. They included Dr. Ingrid von Reher, 1908-2004, who in 1945 became the first female lecturer at Midweider School of Engineering, now Midweider University of Applied Sciences, and Dr. Ingeborg eisenwein rother an economist and from 1947 the first female lecturer at Chemnitz Technical Academy. Then again, despite having the habilitation, many female lecturers in both East and West Germany remained stuck in mid-level positions, with professorships nearly always being awarded to male candidates. In East Germany, although endeavours to promote women also included the academic field, the ruling party still had sway over the appointment of professors. Since the 1990s, the proportion of women in teaching and research has grown steadily. Through national initiatives such as the Female Professor Programme launched in 2008, Germany's Ministry of Education and Research has attempted to raise the share of female professors.
Ingeborg Eisenwein Rother, first female lecturer and economics professor. For decades, Ingeborg Eisenwein Rother was regarded as the leading figure of economic statistics. Her academic career began in Saxony. Following her doctorate in economics, in 1947 she became the first woman to teach at Chemnitz Technical Academy. Ingeborg Rother was born in 1911 into a wealthy family from Chemnitz. Her father was the consul and banker Alfred Hermann Rother. In 1928, Ingeborg initially decided to study foreign languages and music at Lausanne Conservatory in Switzerland. After her return, however, Ingeborg Rother embarked upon another career closer to home when she became a trainee banker in her father's company. In 1933, the ambitious Ingeborg Rother began studying music and economics at the universities of Rostock, Würzburg, Berlin and Leipzig. She climbed the next rung of the academic ladder in 1938, when she received a doctorate for her thesis, The Economic Structure of the Ore Mountain Village at Leipzig University. This was followed by appointments at Leipzig Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Salzburg Department of Agriculture. After 1945, Ingeborg Rother returned to her old hometown. In May 1947, she became the first female lecturer at Chemnitz Technical Academy, now Chemnitz University of Technology, teaching economics. In 1948, she married engineer Dr. Hermann Eisenwein. Two years later, the couple emigrated to West Germany, where Ingeborg Eisenwein Rother taught at Wilhelmshaven College of Labour, Politics and Economics. In 1954, she was awarded the habilitation by the University of Münster. This paved the way for professorial appointments at first Wilhelmshaven College and then the University of Erlangen-Nuremberg. In 1976, emeritus status was conferred on Professor Eisenwein Rother, and in 1986 she received an honorary doctorate from the University of Trier. During her long academic career, she wrote over 100 publications, including a core work providing an introduction to demographic research. Ingeborg Eisenwein Rother died in 2002 near Nuremberg. Great Paluka, forerunner of modern dance and a virtuoso performer. A bold dancer with an unconventional style, Great Paluka made a name for herself all over the world in the 1920s. With the dance form she created, she herself became symbolic of the modern era. She founded her own, still highly acclaimed, dance school in Dresden in 1925. Great Paluka, born Margareta Paluka in 1902 in Munich, spent the first few years of her life in San Francisco. In 1909, she moved to Dresden with her Jewish-Hungarian mother. Margareta, who adored dance, became one of the first students of Mary Wigman and joined her troupe. Unenthusiastic about classical dance, in 1924 she began her solo career under the stage name Great Paluka. That same year, she married Fritz Bienert, whose mother, Ida Bienert, was the first private collector of modern art in Germany. In the 1920s, she hosted a glamorous salon, attended by innovative artists from the Dada movement and Bauhaus architects, including Walter Gropius. In this setting, Paluka herself and the dance form she had created became symbolic of the modern era. In 1925, Great Paluka opened her own dance school in Dresden, and she was allowed to perform and teach freely until 1939. On the opening night of the 1936 Olympic Games, she took part with her own choreography alongside Leni Riefenstahl. However, as a half-Jew, in 1939 she was banned from performing at public events and her school was closed down. In July 1945, Great Paluka reopened her ballet school and it was nationalised four years later. Although Great Paluka was courted by the East German government, her school was heavily regulated in line with the party's cultural policy, for expressionist dance was undesirable 
when classical ballet was supposed to be taught according to the Soviet model. In 1959, Great Palooka left East Germany and went to the island of Zilt in West Germany, from where she negotiated the terms of her return. She was promised the artistic direction of the dance school, a professorship, a car with a chauffeur, and a house on the island of Hittensee. Great Palooka continued to teach dance until old age, moulding Dresden's art scene for generations and giving the city an international flair. After her death in 1993, she was buried on Hiddensee. These days, the Palooka University of Dance is one of Europe's leading academies for young dancers. Leia Grundig Successful painter and art professor In 1949, Artist Leia Grundig was appointed the first female professor at Dresden Academy of Fine Arts, despite the rector's opposition. She became one of East Germany's most successful artists. Leia Langer studied at Dresden Academy of Arts and Crafts from 1922 to 1924, before transferring to the State Art Academy in 1925. One of Leia Langer's early teachers was the painter Otto Dix. In addition, Leia Langer was politically active and joined the Communist Party in 1926. Following graduation, she married fellow student Hans Grundig and began working as a painter and graphic artist. Leia Grundig was persecuted by the Nazis for her Jewish background and political views, in 1935, she was banned from exhibiting her works. After several spells in prison, in 1939 she emigrated to Palestine via Slovakia. She only returned to Dresden ten years later, where she received a teaching post at Dresden Academy of Fine Arts, reopened in 1947, and previously Dresden State Art Academy, whose first rector was her husband, Hans. On the 8th of September 1949, Leia Grundig was appointed Professor of Graphic Arts and Painting, despite the resistance of new rector Mart Stamm, Hans Grundig's successor. Mart Stamm, a former Bauhaus lecturer and reformist architect, considered Leia Grundig artistically and educationally unsuitable. But as a long-time communist and someone persecuted by the Nazis, Leia Grundig was given precedence by the Ministry of Education when it came to appointments in the region of Saxony. Consequently, she emerged unscathed from this clash, whereas March Dam had to leave Dresden. Leia Grundig went on to enjoy great acclaim in East Germany as both an artist and a lecturer, and several major exhibitions were dedicated to her work. In 1964, she was made a member of the Central Committee of the ruling SED. In 1977, Leia Grundig died while on a Mediterranean cruise. Renate Drucker History Professor and Archive Director Renate Drucker, her father a lawyer, graduated from Zalem Castle School. At this point, the whole world of knowledge lay before her. But then the Nazis came to power with their racial laws followed by the war. Nevertheless, she made it to the apex of Leipzig University archive. Originally, Renate Drucker, the youngest member of a Leipzig family of lawyers, had intended to join the legal profession too. However, on leaving Zalem Castle School, she opted to read history, German, English and Latin at Leipzig University. But in April 1938, she was expelled because she couldn't prove that she was a member of the Aryan race and even barred from setting foot on the Institute's premises. She was harassed by the Nazis because of her Jewish background and refused a work permit. Although her expulsion was revoked in 1941, she was still not allowed to take the state examination or a doctorate in Leipzig. Renate Drucker therefore transferred to Strasbourg, where she was awarded a doctorate on the 23rd of November 1944, just hours before the arrival of American troops. The University of Tübingen issued her with a provisional doctorate certificate. On her return to Leipzig after the war, 
Bernard de Drucker was employed as a secretary by the Board of Lawyers and Notaries. In 1947, she began teaching medieval Latin at Leipzig University. In 1950, she was appointed director of the university archive. In addition to researching the history of Leipzig University, she worked tirelessly to rebuild the archive, which had been badly damaged in the war. Until her retirement in 1977, Renate Drucker also taught as an adjunct professor in the Faculty of History. In 1997, she was awarded the Saxon Order of Merit for her dedication and hard work researching Leipzig's Jewish history. That same year, she was declared the first female freewoman of Leipzig. Renate Drucker died in Leipzig on the 23rd of October 2009 at the age of 92. Ingrid von Reher, esteemed lecturer and honorary meteorologist. Being the first female lecturer at Midweider's School of Engineering, Ingrid von Reher faced an uphill struggle with male prejudice. But through a combination of expertise and perseverance, she soon became a role model for her colleagues and students alike. Since 2012, the annual Ingrid von Reher Award has been presented at Mittweide University of Applied Sciences in her honour. Ingrid von Reher came from a German Baltic noble family. In 1927, she left her native Wodz and moved to Vienna, where she enrolled at the university to study chemistry and physics. After completing her doctorate, she returned to Wodz and worked as a chemist at the State Institute of Hygiene. After the war, Ingrid von Reher was expelled from Wodz and settled in Midweida. Because of the acute shortage of lecturers at Midweida's School of Engineering, Ingrid von Reher was taken on there in November 1945. Looking back, she described her initial experience there as follows. Yes, it was terrible at first. People told me that at my first lecture, the students almost fell off their seats because they hadn't thought it possible to be taught by a woman. Fortunately, their doubts soon subsided. Ingrid von Reher remained one of the few female lecturers at Midweider School of Engineering until her retirement in 1968. Aside from teaching, Ingrid von Reher worked hard for the town of Midweida and became a local councillor from 1977 to 1989. As an honorary registrar, she performed over 400 weddings. She applied her expertise by volunteering for the meteorological service of first East Germany and then Germany as a whole following reunification. For her services to meteorology, in 1993 Ingrid von Reher was awarded the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany. On her 90th birthday, she was made a free woman of Mittweida. Ingrid von Reher died in Mittweida in 2004. The Exhibition Project The exhibition Hashtag Her Story, Saxony and its Female Academics, is a joint project by the Equal Opportunities Office of Leipzig University and Leipzig University Archive in conjunction with other Saxon higher education archives, colleges and universities, as well as the Coordinating Office for the Promotion of Equal Opportunities at Higher Education Institutions in Saxony. This exhibition would not have been possible without the kind support of the Saxon Ministry of Social Affairs and Consumer Protection and the Minister of Equality and Integration. The establishments of higher education participating in Hashtag Her Story are Leipzig University, Dresden University of Technology, Freiberg University of Mining and Technology, Midweide University of Applied Sciences, Dresden Academy of Fine Arts, Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi University of Music and Theatre in Leipzig, and the HHL Leipzig Graduate School of Management.